Good morning, good evening and good afternoon all and welcome to this fortnight's instalment of the Ish Plus Six podcast, the podcast series where you could discover your next favourite artist. On today's episode, I am joined by the one and only OG Kemi. OG Kemi is a London-based rapper who's recently been making waves in the underground scene with his most recent album, Polaris, with popular tracks such as V for Veneta, Serenity and Hereditary being fan favourites. Make sure you guys all go and check his stuff out. Please all welcome OG Kemi to the podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fortnight's installment of the Ish Plus Six podcast, the podcast series where you could discover your next favorite artist. On today's episode, I am joined by the one and only OG Kemi. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Come on, how's it going, Kemi? How's it going? What's good, man? What's good? Kemi is your actual name, right? Yeah, Oluwafi Kemi. Oluwafi Niger- Kemi. Yeah, like- Kemi. Do you get me? <laughs> that sounds Nigerian, to be fair. I think I... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound Egyptian or anything. Yeah, nah, I mess with that still. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're coming to us from London. Which part of London did you say you're coming to us from? North London right now. North Please. London. Usually I'm in Nottingham. I'm in Nottingham most of the time. Nottingham, all right. And uh, which part of North London? Uh, Enfield area. Enfield. All right, man. That's sick. That's sick. Uh, I've never been there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I. Where are you from? Where's you? Where's you from? Uh, okay. So I was born in South London, moved to Cardiff when I was like nine, and now I'm in Essex doing this. Uh, you know, studying and all of that. But um, yeah. Let let let's just get into it. I think you've seen every single episode of this podcast before, so you know that we always start off with a joke, and um. Today's no different. I've uh, I'm I'm in too deep to to stop this bit. So let's just get into it. Um, <laughs> what's the worst part of an apple addiction? What? What's the worst part of an apple addiction? Yeah, of an apple addiction. Uh, probably sore eyes. Nah, man, you can't see a doctor about it. Bad doctor. You can't see a doctor about it. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> look, let, let's just get right into the questions, honestly, because, um, yeah, like... move swiftly on. All right, so what I noticed, look, just doing some brief research on yourself, you have a really keen eye for high-end fashion brands, um, you know, such as Stussy, Comme des Garçons, you know, Marcella, all, all of the things that you'd see on, like, you know, Farfetch and that other one that I can't remember the name of. But, um... Yeah, I want to know what your favorite fashion trends are right now. We'll talk about fashion a bit more before we get into the music. Fashion trends right now. I haven't really got any favorite fashion trends. I'm not really, not really liking anything that's going on right now. Really? No, nah, not really. You know what? That well, what what trends? What are some trends that you've adopted yourself? I'd say. I don't. I try not to like. I try not to like tap into like the trends and just be what I like and wear what I like, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like whoever I'm wearing at the time is the trend, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like um, I'd be looking at trends and being like, oh, cool, I'm going to wear that, you know what I'm saying? I just wear what I like. And usually, usually I'm like about two years ahead of everybody anyways. So it's not really, it's not really a thing I'd be checking out, you know what I'm saying? I don't be on TikTok, scrolling through TikTok, thinking, oh, what am I going to wear next? I already know what I'm going to wear. Yeah, exactly. When did you um first start getting into it then? Because I know that you're around, you know, early 20s. So I'm just curious as to when you actually um, started taking an interest in how you look and that um, kind of thing. When did I start taking an interest? Um, my mom, my mom always kept me fly since I was since I was a youth. So it's it's been it's been with me forever. But like the first time maybe I found an interest in it was probably 2011. When um when ASAP Rocky dropped Live Love ASAP because I was listening to him obviously you know and I wanted to be like him. Twenty eleven, yeah, that's that's pretty young though. <laughs> yeah, I was like eleven. I was like eleven years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, eleven years old. So yeah, like I'd say eleven. Nah, but it's crazy because like when people talk about oh yeah I've been a Rocky fan since day I've been like a Skepta Tyler whatever fan since day I always think like yo. Back when they say since day, 
for me, day is when I was like 10 years old, like still watching CBBC. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I was too young to even know about any of that stuff, you know, but nah, I mean, the fact that you were 11 and already tapped into all of that stuff is crazy in. to me. I was tapped in. I was tapped in. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, okay. So, so since you don't really seem to have a favorite, what's your least favorite fashion trend right now then? What would you say? Maybe a fashion trend. I could be here forever, man. <laughs> I don't really Honestly, like, same. I don't really like how, I don't like how niggas is doing the whole color coordination thing. Like it's too much. I don't like that. I don't like the whole fitted cap, varsity jacket, dunks trend. I don't like that. There's, there's a lot of stuff I don't like, but off the top of my head, I can't remember. I don't like when people aren't dressing for like themselves. They're just, they're seeing the trend. Like for example, like Rick Owens, for example, there'll be people that don't know who Rick Owens is, but because, you know, that's the thing right now, they're wearing it and they're not wearing it correctly. You know what I'm saying? I feel like- exactly. You know, because I respect that designer and I love that designer and I know how he puts things together and how he's made stuff. I feel like some people are just seeing the shoe and because that's the that's the shoe of the year right now. They're like, let me just put that on with some sweats and whatnot. And I feel like... Yeah, how can you wear Rick Owens with sweats? That's crazy to me. I don't understand how... It's wild. But yeah. you will be doing it a lot. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what. A lot of my least favorite fashion trends are actually feminine related because, like, I've been seeing a whole lot of you know the she and stuff. Remember when all the girls were wearing that weird strap top but with like the middle tit showing? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what that, you mean. That dumbass top. Do you know how I saw... okay, right? It was the novelty of it was cool for like the first week. I was like, hey, yo, listen, all these girls posting the same pic with this top. I- I'm not, I'm not. I got no issues with it, but now now I'm still seeing it and it's like, okay, we get it, all right? And I'm starting to think, yo, what would this girl look like actually dressed classy? You know what I mean? I feel like, I feel like, I feel like classy dressing, you know, I feel like you can still be classy and be half naked. You can still be classy and have that top on, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that top in particular... There's certain girls that can style that shit and make that shit look good. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah. It takes I a special kind of person. I personally feel like I personally feel like the women right now are dressing better than the men. You know what I'm saying? Are you I sure? Like, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, bro. They all have their little categories. You know what I'm saying? Their categories I don't like. Their categories I do like. But like as a whole, in general, I feel like the women are dressing way better. I can't lie to you, like. All right, man. Way, right. Better, way, way better. And women's I, wear is way more interesting than men's wear, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, women have a lot more freedom, unfortunately. That's you know, the thing. Guys, guys, you know, they they be feeling like certain fits or certain cuts of shirts is gay or, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But with women's wear, you know how they are, you know what I'm saying? They're really free with all of that type of stuff. So I feel like it's way more interesting. And I feel like if you tap in with the, with the right women, you'll see that like, some of them are crazy. Like a lot of my fashion influences are act- actually come from the women I'm around, you know what I'm saying? You know, I like I like what they be wearing. You know what I'm saying? I think it's cool. But I hear I'm, what you're saying about that top though. I don't like that top either, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think that the way, I think that opinion about women dressing better than men might just come from the fact that women have a lot more options than men in regards to clothing. You know, they have skirts, they have dresses, they have all sorts. Whereas men just have like the standard, you know, cargo trousers and jeans and baggy, baggy whatever, you know. To be fair, men have skirts as well. They just don't want to wear them. Yeah, but I mean, would you wear a skirt though, bro? Come on. Yeah, would you actually I, wear a skirt? I could, I could make a skirt look fly. I can make a skirt look fly. Okay, yeah, um, it depends on the type of shirt, but still, I mean, skirt even, but still. It's all about a person at the end of the day. Like, I can make anything look fly. You know what I'm saying? It's about how you carry yourself in that outfit. You feel me? So I like about, that. I like that energy. That's energy right there. <laughs> that's 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 the thing right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I I don't know, man. I. I I'm I'm still I'm still learning, you know. Like I'm still learning myself wow. about what I'm into and my kind of thing. Like I at this point in my life, I'm still using a color wheel to put my outfits together. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, man. But um, okay. So moving on from your least favorite fashion trends. So you mentioned um, 
Rick Owens and ASAP Rocky being inspirations of yours in regards to fashion. I want to know if there were any more or if you could perhaps dive a little bit deeper into, you know, just inspirations in general. Influence, influence me like fashion wise. Yeah, yeah, fashion wise, yeah. Uh, fashion wise, fashion wise. Genuine. Yeah, back in the day, you used to have them blazers that were crop tops. I think that shit goes crazy. Um, right. Lady Gaga, she has crazy fits as well. Um, Frank Ocean, um, Zelia Banks, Chief Keith. You know, some days I like to be like prim and proper. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I like to dress like ghetto fabulous. You know what I'm saying? I like that ghetto fabulous, true religion. You know what I'm saying? Balenciaga's yeah. getting real rough. You know what I'm saying? Like I like that look. Um, designers, designers, designers. Obviously, made so much jello. Obviously, um, Kim Jones. You know what I'm saying? So wide range of people, to be honest with you. Wide range of people that you know I be feeling. But yeah, you know, that's a couple of them. I get you, man. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, again, I'm still just getting into it. Like I didn't even know Chief Keith was that big of a fashion icon in regards to you know. See how you see how all the kids are dressing like Playboy Carti right now? Yeah. Back in the day, like 2012, the reason mm-hmm. everybody's wearing baggy cargoes, like you know, with um army prints, you know, polos, that was all Chief Keith. True religion, that was all Chief Keith, you know what I'm saying? Really? Wow. And I started all of that, you know what I'm saying? And it might not look good to the eye, like, but that's their swag. And I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. Yeah, he honestly. Had, he had a whole movement and um People saw him and they were like, he was that guy for the kids. And they were all dressing like him. I was dressing like him. You know what I'm saying? I had a phase where I was dressing like that as well. I think it's crazy. Yeah, man, for real. I think, I don't know. For me personally, I just love the way, this is is a basic option, but ASAP Rocky, the way he dresses and the way he puts an outfit together, like, I went through a phase where I was looking at his outfits and I was like, yo, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. What is my man doing? And he does have a couple of those. I'm not going to lie to you. But the way he'll bring together pieces, like my man wore like knee length white uh, socks this one time. I was like, past the knee length even. I was like, yo, what, what's my man doing? But he made it work, you know? It's being able to make it, it like there's putting an outfit together, but it's making it work and pulling it off that's a completely different thing you know of course yeah man um okay so we'll get into the music a little bit more and um i in one of your tracks um (laughs) i do want to talk about you fighting in school a little bit about your school (laughs) your school time your time in school i want to talk a little bit about that so you've talked a little bit about fighting in school in the past um Lyrics such as fighting in school, I did it for fun, was fighting these crackers at lunch. Tell me about that. Elaborate, please. I I need to know more about this. It's all in the bars, man. I was fighting these crackers at lunch, bro. You know, when you go to like a predominantly white school, you're the only guy there. You know what I'm saying? I went through a lot of bullshit. I had to, you know, I got jumped. I got jumped by some older kids. Yeah. Why? Cause I don't know, man. I was, I was, I was a prick. I can't lie to you. I was a prick. I was in a whole lot of bullshit back in school. Um, it was, it was traumatizing, but it was fun at the same time. Looking back, but, that's you know, fun. You know that? <laughs> oh, for real. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I learned a lot of lessons. I learned how to fight because I had to, I had to fend for myself. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm proud of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud that I became a man that can now protect my friends and protect, you know, my siblings. Do you know what I'm saying? That. Like, it's something I learned during school, and unfortunately, I was just around a lot of white people, and you know, I feel that, that those are one of my favorite bars ever. Like, those are one of my favorite bars because with those lines, you can just you can just tell the experience that I went through. You know what I'm saying? I was in, you know, I was in the locker rooms just fighting with niggas. You know what I'm saying? I was in the change rooms fighting with niggas. You know what I'm saying? I played rugby. I played basketball. All of them things, you know what I'm saying? I had a lot of disagreements with people. There was a lot of racism, you know what I'm saying? A lot of horrible things happening to me. And I had to look out for myself, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I mean, and I feel like it's the same just across the UK in general when it comes to, um, you know, being being black in, a, in school. Like, <laughs> KSI ruined my high school experience. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not for everybody, bro. 
<laughs> he ruined it for everyone. And like, fair enough, he got money from it, but he he finessed these guys. But still, like, I I went through the entirety of year ten and eleven getting called a Zulu, yo. Do you know how mad that is? See, that wouldn't crazy. run. That's what I'm saying. But me, I had to do something about that. That's why I was fighting these crackers at lunch. You know I saying? respect that. I actually have to respect that. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't just let niggas, you know, call me monkey, make monkey noises, all of that bullshit. I had to do something about it. I can't personally sit there and let white people take the piss out of me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a king. You know what I'm saying? Part I respect that, that, man. I respect that. And honestly, if I... <laughs> If I'd have known life would turn out like this, I'd have been a much bigger dick in high school, I feel like. Same, you know same. What I, mean? I, was, I was already a prick, but I think about this all the time. I'm like, I'm still here. Nothing really happened. I still got into uni and shit. I should have been worse. <laughs> I should have been way worse. But, you know. One million life. percent. I, yeah, in a in a different timeline. In a different timeline, I was... I, I, I stood my ground a bit more, but you know, it's just one of those things, I guess. It's just one of those things. Um, I do want to get into the next topic, which is the song or the track. I don't really like calling them songs, you know, but the track sometimes, um, that's one of my favorite tracks for your, from yourself. It sort of offers a more introspective look at yourself than, yeah. you know, some of the other tracks that I've heard. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you were thinking while writing that one? I was just upset, I know. I was I was just upset, you know what I'm saying? Like Fables Two, Fables Two was like that's when I was like, you know, taking the shit a little bit more serious. And a lot of the tracks on there, um, I was a lot of the tracks on there are violent, and a lot of the tracks in there are like goofy. But then I needed to let people know that you know I have a soul. At the end of the day, I'm still a human. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying because I like. I like how my music makes people feel cool and feel like unstoppable and immortal and reckless. But like, I want them to know that even though I, I am like that, I still have like a softer core on the inside. You know what I'm saying? I need people to know like my story. And that was the beginning of me telling my story and you know, I'm going to continue doing that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's, that's what was going through my mind when I made that. That's completely understandable, man. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's just... I do think it's important for artists to be able to, you know, put the sort of like braggadocious side to one side sometimes when it comes to making music and just like, I don't know if you've seen Genius. There is one part in Genius, you know, the Kanye West thing in Genius where Cuddy is with Kanye and he's like, if things get to start getting too braggadocious, he can chill, but he can't hang. You know what I mean? Like... Mm -hmm. It's like that's what that's one of the things that I admire about about Cuddy. I was I was I was slating him on one of the previous episodes, but I'll be real with you. I admire the fact that he can be so vulnerable with his art, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of my musical influences, actually. He's one of the first artists that like I, you know, grew towards, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and exactly. Like, Cuddy, yeah. Um, who, who else would you say your musical influences are, by the way? I didn't ask that. Azalea Banks. <laughs> Azalea Banks is the GOAT, bro. Azalea. I swear she's always in something, though. Like, yeah. isn't she... She's basically like the... Almost like the... <laughs> this sounds bad, but like the Trisha Paytas of music or something, you know? She's the GOAT, and she's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to her, man. Shout out to her for her. She's the GOAT. She be making people feel good. You know what I'm saying? That's and I true, like man. feel good. She made me feel good. Is she the one she who was on the Breakfast Club? Am I thinking of the right person? I think she's been on the Breakfast Club before, but I can't, I can't remember to be honest. With you. I don't know who you're thinking about, but yeah, Azalea Banks, ASAP Rocky, of course, Freddie, yeah. Gip, um, Kay Trinada, um, yeah, those those people, you know, that so, oh Max B, never forget Max B. Max B is the cop. Max B is the cop. Claro, Claro is the god. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Couple cool people out there. Yeah, man, that's a range, and I respect that. Honestly, I, I don't usually hear Claro when I'm, when I'm, you know, like usually on Twitter, but not necessarily on like interviews like this. Yeah, I'm a Claro fan, bro. Like Claro is amazing. Claro is one of the best artists I've ever taken in. That's one of the crazy. best. Are you? That's a bold statement. <laughs> Claro is amazing. Claro is amazing. You need to sit down and really take in Claro and really 
listen to what she's saying. You know what I'm saying? She's so real. I will say she did help to popularize the sort of like bedroom pop lo-fi kind of movement that took place in 2018, 2017. Yeah, she's crazy, man. Shout out to her. Yeah, man, for real. Um, yeah, I did. I wasn't really feeling the recent album, but the one before that was was hard still. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I like the recent album. I didn't like it as as much as um the last one, but I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So, another topic in this one's a lot more lighthearted. Uh, from your music, you tend to talk a lot. Okay, so the two most um widely mentioned topics that I've found to be, mm. you know, uh, addressed in your music is fashion and women, mm. and I want to play a game of one's got a go. So let's just go with um, one's got to go fashion, music, or girls. One of the three. One's got to go. One's got to go fashion, music, or girls. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! It's a mad question. It's a mad question. Your life's whoa. done if no matter wait. which way it goes. Hey, wait, fashion, music, or girls. Fashion, music, or girls. Um. I think, I think fashion's got to go, man. Uh... <laughs> I think fashion's got to go. Because without women, I can't make music. But without fashion, I can't make... Nah, 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 nah. I can make music without fashion, I think. As long as music is there, I think I'm, I'm going to be calm. You know what I'm saying? But I can't make music without, without women. I can't lie. That's the thing. See, the current phase that I'm in is music. Sorry, with, in regards to music, is like... The music that I make is like fashion and women. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like it's not even a bragging thing. It's like the energy I get from women just makes me want to do cool shit. You know what I'm saying? It's from, it's I just completely that, get that. You know what I'm saying when you're around like a wonderful woman, regardless of whether you're rapping about her or rapping about you know getting around or whatever, you still feel powerful. You know what I'm saying when you have a good woman beside you. You know what I'm saying? So you can never really cut that out. You know what I'm saying? You can never really cut that out. And a lot of my fan base is women. You know what I'm saying? And they like that's, hearing my... That's such a humble brag, bro. Come on, come on. <laughs> Don't say that, man. It ain't, even, it, ain't even, it ain't even a humble brag. I'm just keeping it real. Like, it, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I can't, I can't, you know, let go of women in general. You know what I'm saying? Because I just can't. I can't. Not even like I have like an addiction to women or whatnot. It's just that they're just so... They're just so cool. Like, I admire them. A lot of my idols are women. You know what I'm saying? They're powerful people. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can't cut that out because my music wouldn't be as enticing. You know I, mean? I completely so, understand that, yeah. And I do think that... Um, I do think that... Fashion, women, and music all have the potential to give you the same feeling if you're having a positive experience with them. Like... If if you're wearing headphones and you're out on a walk and you've got like some insane track in your in your ears, mm. you're gonna have a pep in your step. If you've mm. got a girl that's constantly sending you red snaps without you even asking, you're gonna have a pep in your step. If yeah. you're wearing the sickest fit to ever touch the earth, to ever touch the streets outside of your house, you're gonna have the maddest pep in your step. You know what I mean? So it's like mm. all three of those all three of them have the potential to give you the same feeling, you know? Yeah. I agree with you, for real. Yeah, man. Explain the hat, by the way. Please explain that. Please talk about that. It's cozy. You know what I'm saying? I bring it with me everywhere, bro. It's just cozy. It's a safety bear hat. It's just cozy. You know what I'm saying? I like silly hats. I like silly hats. I think I think they're cool as fuck. Because people will always ask about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like about fashion. It's a conversation starter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really be talking much, but if someone's got a good fit, I'm going to talk to them. I'm like, yeah, what's the meaning behind this? Why did you put this on this way? You know what I'm saying? One million percent, man. Yeah. That's what attracts me. What, what, what is the first thing that will attract you to a, to a, to a woman, by the way? Just out of curiosity, because I think I know the answer, but I'm just curious. Mm, the first thing that will attract me to a woman is her fit, man. Or whatever she's wearing. That's what's going to attract me first, man. So shoes. 
a shoe. You're a shoe guy. Yeah, I'm a shoe guy. And shoes are going to try me first. I do want to um, talk about one of your more recent tracks off of your album, Polaris, um, called Why Does Stuff Always Go Left? Uh, <laughs> I do want it's, to... It's interesting to hear your style of music. Was that produced by yourself, by the way? How much production do you is um, credited um, to you? Uh, yeah, I produced that with my with my boy, Keys. Keenan, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, sick. Um, it's interesting to hear sort of like a fusion of Afro beats and rap. I hate calling it rap, but like, you know, because it's obviously a subgenre of rap, but like Afro beats and rap, you know, I'm just yeah. curious as to, you know, your headspace that you were in when you were making that. Were you, was it, was this something that you actively wanted to do beforehand or was it just something that? That song, that song yeah, sounds exactly how it sounded in my head years ago. That's exactly how it was supposed to sound. That's exactly how it was supposed to sound. But um, I don't know. I like, I don't know. I just like mix and stuff up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be making, I be making like the craziest bagels. You know what I'm saying? And that song is like the craziest bagel ever. You know what I'm saying? Bagel. Different, yeah, bagel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be having crazy shit inside my bagel. Oh, right. <laughs> It's an analogy, do you feel me? It's an analogy. Yeah. Get me? So that song is like a concoction of different stuff, but it still tastes good at the end. You know what I'm saying? I you get that, man. Like, what do you feel when you listen to that song? Like, how do you feel? Honestly, you... man, I just feel like I'm chilling on a holiday or something, you know, which is weird because it's like the the tone of the, of the track is kind of like low and sort of like yeah. somber, but it just... it. <laughs> It makes me feel chill, you know? It makes me feel relaxed. I just feel... I I feel like a weight has been lifted off me listening to that, you know? Yeah. That's that's how I felt after finishing the track. I feel like I got a lot off my chest. You know what I'm saying? Respect, man. This music stuff is therapy to some people, for real. Yeah, for real. Yeah, man. Um, You mentioned that it... Uh... <laughs> that it was conceptualized in your head years prior to this. Is that something that happens often with you? Like you've got a bunch of concepts in your head right now that you want to, you 100%, know. 100%, 100%. I'm always thinking ahead when it comes to the music stuff and the fashion stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Your time. Thinking ahead in regards to like what the future of music will look like or what your future well, of music my, will look like. I don't really care what it looks like for them, man, because it doesn't really have anything to do with me. But... I know what I want to sound like next year, the year after that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I have, I have all of that stuff in place because there are loads of different directions that can go. Can you tell us a little bit about that, or is it, is that um, still? Um, I could, you know, I could. Like I've got a whole house side of me. You know, I have a lot of house music. I have a lot of um, neo soul music in the vault as well. I'm saying there's loads of things I'm experimenting with, loads of topics I want to get into, different angles I want to get, you know. I just want to share different vibes with people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I respect that. And have you got many features that you've got planned out or do they just happen? Um... Features. All right, let me tell you about features, you know. Yeah, because I know that you featured on Bib Summer's track the other day and, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was hard still. I messed with that. Yeah, but, that um... guy's crazy. That's, that guy's crazy. Yeah. Um, I love doing features. Just you know what I'm saying. Features is like, features is like going on holiday, and behaving however you want because no one at home is gonna see how you're acting. You know what I'm saying. So I go on holiday. I go on a trek. I, I'm, a, I'm as outlandish as I could be. You know, I do my thing, and it's like an advertisement as well because people are gonna hear that, be like, "Whoa, who the fuck is this nigga?" Like, let me check him out. So I like doing features. So. I love doing them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have so many features coming out. But as for putting people on my stuff, if the song is like a rap song, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna ask a feature from you if I feel like you can spin me. Because if you can't spin me on the track, there's no point on in you, in you being on my track, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not really gonna be elevated. If I spin saying? you, can you elaborate I, a bit more on that? When I say spin me, I feel like they have to do perform better than me because I've already brought a performance to you right and 
if I get if I get a feature and they come and they don't do as good as me, but they're cool. Maybe they're big or whatever and they're cool or whatever, but they don't do as good as me. What's the point? So that's why I like that says a lot because you can see they're only like about what three rappers on my stuff. Because I don't feel like many people can spin me like lyrically and flow wise besides those guys. You know what I'm saying? So unless I feel like you can actually take me out and be like, yeah, you're the highlight of this. I'm not gonna ask for a feature. But then when it comes to like um when it comes to singers and RB artists, like I have a really good ear for, you know, special sounds and unique sounds, and I need that on my project so that we can take it to the next level. You feel me? But yeah, that's how I feel about features, really. But I love doing them. I love doing them. And if the bread is there, um, <laughs> bro, what these people don't know yet is I would do it for free, but that's how much I love features. But if the bread is there, I'm gonna do it, man. Like, what million percent? One million percent. Do you want me to keep that in there, or do you want me to? Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, keep it in there. Keep it in there, cause they. You need to know, like, if you're listening, you still need to pay me. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still need to. You still need to pay me. I still. I still have to live. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I still have shoes to buy. You know what I'm saying? I have bills to pay. Do you know what I'm saying? So, it's like that. But I like doing it. So, if you ask me and the bread is there. I'm gonna do it, like for sure, and I'll get it back to you quickly, like quick as fuck. But yeah, you got the buzz in the notes app already. I mess with that. I mess with that. <laughs> I, don't the, I don't even be using the notes app, bro. I just be going in, like I just be going in. Like it's it's a thing that you know. If if you've gotten a feature off me, you know, like people be getting it back in like five ten minutes. Five right, ten. Nah, nah, that's an exaggeration. Them. That has to be. Ask them. I promise. Ask them. Ask them. I always screenshot the um the text messages between us. Like they'll send the file. It will be what three p.m. and by like three, by maybe like seven past three, they have a demo back already. Nah. If I'm, if I'm sitting, by, <laughs> if I'm sitting by my Mac, if I'm sitting by my Mac, and they need a sixteen from me. I'm giving them that 16 on, in under 10 minutes. Nah, that's mad still. I mess with that. I mess with that. Yeah. And of course, the quality is going to be there. Okay, cool. So you've dropped two albums, three EPs, and various features, as we've mentioned. Um, but I want to know what's next for you, Kemi. What's, uh, what's, what's on your radar? What kind of things are you looking into over the next couple of months, years? In the main goal is to finish like my next tape but like i have eps planned and i have collab eps planned as well but the main goal is the is the tape like i'm trying to put out a tip and try and outdo myself you know get visuals as well you know really push myself out there you know what i'm saying because i don't feel like i've had the way i describe it to people is i've only had two toes in this game like i haven't put my whole body in this game yet like and I feel like people haven't seen what I can really do. You know what I'm saying? So the next tape is is me really, really like putting the effort in visual wise, promo wise, like music wise, you know, exploring different sounds and stuff, and, you know, working with cool new people. That like, that's the that's the goal. That's the uh, thing. Like that's the thing that I've noticed about your stuff as well, is that you haven't got any music videos out or anything. And I feel like a lot of your tracks could actually be elevated to that next level with a video or something i'm just i'm a procrastinator i'm a procrastinator and you know she is i'm just a procrastinator bro. and but and then i, I procrastinate so much that it's kind of too late because i have new music out already you know what i'm saying so i get you know. that man but i swear the weekend um released the video for die for you like a bunch of years after that after starboy came I out I could do that. I could do that. I'll get my money up. You know what I'm saying? I'll get my money up. Grab a few videos here and there for the videos that deserve, for the music that deserve videos. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, come. man, for real. But, yeah. yeah. Um, my final question to you, Kemi, before I let you go on your way. <laughs> uh, this is a question that I ask for literally everyone. Um, and it's just, I'm just curious as to what your um, answer would be to this one. You are heard by everyone on earth for 10 seconds. What do you say? Oh, wow. That's so crazy. Yeah. Wait, say that again. Say that again. Everyone on earth can hear you for 10 seconds. What do you say? 
I would say, I would say, hug your mother, hug and kiss your mother, hug and kiss your mother, and tell her you love her. That's what you should be doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's my answer. Hug, kiss, and tell your mom you love her. That's it. Yeah. I have to I, respect I, that, man. I feel, like, I feel like people forget to tell their mom that they love them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's important. Bro, oh, yeah, bro, yeah. All right, respect for that. Yeah, respect. Um, Other than that, that's all I really have to say. I mean, honestly, I respect that because most people, you know, that's like, oh, check out the my, my, my most recent tape. Check out Red Tape. Check out this, that. Yeah, no. Cool that they will hear that they will hear that. You know what I'm saying in their own time, but mom is like, see, I'm saying mom is literally that. Say, tell your mom you love her. You know what I'm saying, and hug your man them and tell your man them that you love them. They will be like, hey, pause, hey, hey, what, what, what's ain't no pause, ain't no pause, ain't no pause. Hug your man them, be in dead ass, like hug your man them, tell them that, tell them that you love them. Literally, I respect that man, and I respect. <laughs> I find it funny how you left out the hug and kiss your man them. <laughs> I, I no I hug your man them. I ain't kissing my man them. I'll be real. I'm, I'm not. I'm not that progressive. For me, I ain't that progressive. But not quite. You know, yeah. Nah. Yeah. I get that. I hug your hug your man them. Tell your man them you love them. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. No. On that note, let me shout out my man them. Still shout out my manager Kobe Banks. You know. 40F, that's his brand. You know what I'm saying? He's going crazy right now. He's one of my influences. He's one of my influences. Shout out Steez. He's one of my influences as well. You know, that's what I got to say. But yeah, thank all you right. for having me, by the way. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, man. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorites. This is definitely um, up there. I do want to say to everyone watching this, make sure you all go check out OG Kemi's most recent album, Pol Polaris. My favorite tracks are Vifa Say red leather, yellow leather. My favorite tracks are V for Veneta. They don't, they didn't need to recast. Well, I swear, I uh, let me just read this off the thing because I'm reading it off and I'm trying to act like I'm not. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, make sure you all go check out OG Kemi's most recent album, Polaris. My favorite tracks are V for Veneta. They didn't need to recast Aunt Vivian, bro. And why does stuff always go left? Make sure you guys go check it out. Kemi, anything else you'd like to say apart from that before we close off? Nah, it's all good, man. Appreciate appreciate you for having me on. You know? It's been a pleasure, yeah. man, for real. Yeah, it's been cool. Listeners of the Ish Plus Six podcast, watchers of the Ish Plus Six podcast, thank you for watching. Keep it real, and I will see you all later. Alligators. Yeah.